This is a Zoom H4n Pro handheld sound recorder. Pretty nifty device, but like the previous generation H4n, suffers from a fragile side buttons, a fragile SD card door, and a flimsy battery cover that tends to disappear. On the back there's a few rubber plugs hiding screws. The stereo microphone assembly doesn't really need to come apart at this point, but it might be necessary uh, to get access to inner layers of the, the stack of boards inside. The hex screws on the front side definitely need to come off. I think those are two millimeter heads. Separating the, the uh, both covers, all well, the back one first, from the side plates was a bit tricky. At first I didn't know exactly uh, which side to, to pry in or out. Eventually you figured it out without breaking anything. Once the back cover is loose, you need to take it off uh, just a tiny bit so you can get access to the to two electrical connectors, one for the battery pack, the other for the speaker. I'll take those off. Here's that little uh, indentation wh where the, the other cover latches. So it was a simple matter of pushing just in the right spot not too hard. I didn't want to mangle the, the side of the the seam of the cover as usually happens when you're using, using steel tools for this kind of stuff. The side plates were a bit tricky also to take out. Not very difficult but uh, you definitely need to have the main board separated from the, the front cover. And here's one of the broken switches just uh, torn off nearly. Well, some pads are torn off. The other side is pretty much the same thing. Here's a closer look. Some of the pads, the front pads are cleanly ripped off. Now this one here, I did have one pad to repair. What I did was to clean the area. Then I mixed a tiny bit of epoxy and glued the pad back on, left it overnight to cure, and then I did my best to, to solder it. Luckily, um, even if I fail to connect it properly, uh, both sides are internally connected in the switch, so it doesn't matter. Once that was done, I looked at the assembly again and I thought it was pretty pitiful, so I added this sort of a band-aid, which I have mixed feelings about and just took some thin copper wire and just wrapped it around and twisted on the other side and it's only thin copper it's not it's not very strong but i figure it's going to help and apparently you can't uh, well zoom didn't want to send me a replacement <laughs> so my, my fix was to use some uh, fishing line and I drilled, I thought of just uh, using a sewing needle and push the the line through, but I was afraid I would rip the soft plastic or rubber of the door, so I instead took a very small a drill bit it's, and just to tighten a, tighten a knot on here. It should, should work fine. And that's it, the buttons work now. And again, if there's one thing to take away from this video is and if you own one of these devices, is you got to be really careful with those buttons because they're barely holding on.